Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. It's time for our weekly Gibson Demo Shop recap. So, there's definitely been a lot more players' models showing up in this shop, but they're still producing a few unique custom one-off pieces outside of just listing directly on their website. But let's just say, things got very crazy on their site this week. Before we get into this week's current offerings, I need to cover two that I missed last week. Alright, we've got this Gibson Firebird non-reverse. This thing looks so much like the Fender Player Jaguar. You know, the Davey 504 guitar that I did a little tribute to him in this video? Because this looks like a single coil, and this looks like a regular humbucker, but that's a zebra bob, and the black one just disappears, and that Ferrari red finish on this model looks stellar. I love that. That is a striking guitar. And this one... I'll be honest, I don't know how I missed it. This was an SG special that they refinished in what they call a blue velvet paint job. $24.99 is very expensive for a special. That's a thousand dollar premium, but look what they did to this thing. Not only did they do their toaster pickups, as they call them, the toaster P90s that fit within mini humbucker rings. Looks like those might be black and then it's mixed with chrome. And then they went as far as giving those... <laughs> They gave the pickups pickup rings, and then they gave the pickup rings pickup rings. That's really hard to see. That's the first time I've seen that. But then they gave it this little short Les Paul style pick guard. They gave it like an SG2, like early 70s Gibson SG style top route. I, I, I don't know why they did that, but then they gave it mini toggles for each one. And there's no toggle switch on here anymore with the output jack on the front. So those must be on and off switches for each one and then master volume, master tone would be my guess. But they've got the rap tail bridge here, giant custom made plaque. I mean, the rest of the guitar is kind of boring. They didn't do too much different to it, but at least they refinished the entire thing. They really blacked it out with the tuner tips as well. So kind of a cool guitar, but expensive for what it is. Wow, that looks really kind of janky. <laughs> Using one screw to hold down multiple things. Okay. And unfortunately, before the refinish, it doesn't look like they filled in the holes too expertly, so you can still kind of see the remnants of it. But that was one freaky modification. All right, into today's offerings. So the first thing that kind of caught my attention was this weird guitar. You might not have heard of this one before. It's called a Les Paul Future Tribute. A strange early 2010s model where they were trying to pay tribute to the future. <laughs> and basically what makes these things so interesting is the tuners that they put on them. They were Steinbergers. But this one being a lefty on top of that just made it extra fascinating to me. These tuners used to sell for like 350 bucks on the used market until Gibson started to sell them on their website. You can now pick them up for a measly 100 bucks if they're ever in stock anyways. Which hey, they actually have some black ones in stock and gold. Those ones get a bit pricier though. But still nothing compared to the 350 they used to consistently sell for. So now I'm not so scared of those tuners. If one of them breaks, you can just buy a new set. And now this guy. I have been looking for this guitar forever. The Gibson Les Paul Special Tribute P90. I swear, every single one of these I look at, I tell you guys the same story. These are very low-end, budget-level Gibsons. I think they're $9.99 brand new. But since they have a maple neck, there's a chance they can look like this. This thing has no right to be as figured as it did being in a budget level of Gibson. But you can tell it's got some very, very nice figuring. Now, it's not quite as crazy as the Les Paul Futura that I reviewed in this video. But so far, that's the best one I've ran into. This one has some weird stuff going on on the back, though. It's like, is that the wood grain that didn't, like, take the grain fill? Or are they actually nicks and dings? It looks like the wood grain to me. But what is this? I... Is it somebody's hair stuck under the finish? That does happen occasionally, but it's just a kind of a strange raised area on that one. And it's got some other nicks and dings and impressions and scratches. The only reason this thing hasn't sold at a hundred dollar discount is because nobody's actually clicked on it to bother to look at the back. That's why I make sure to do that when I do these recap videos in case we've all missed something. This is a great buy. I'm tempted. I would have bought it if it was blue, but to be honest, I've kind of lost interest in reviewing this model because it took me, what, two years to find the one I want. So I'll leave that for one of you guys. 
Next up was a 61 SG reissue. I just thought it looked good because we've got the gold hardware, the uncovered pickups with the gold pole pieces. Kind of a goofy, weird headstock. I didn't like this era when they did the really pointy, kind of shortened headstock look. I'm sure in the future there will be people posting on Gibson forums in 2030 going, is this a real Gibson? They're just, yeah, that's that's how they were done. Derek Trucks SGs were very similar. I think they were just trying to emulate a vintage one, but went a little bit too crazy. Next up, not too much to talk about on this tribute studio. It just had some wood grain that I thought you guys might appreciate taking a look at. But now for the coolest custom color that is still available at the time of recording, we see a USA Epiphone Casino in here. Take a look at that. They call it Pony Boy Gold. And if I didn't just review both of the colors of this model a month ago, I totally would have bought this one to do it because it is cool. This kind of reminds me of the Antigua finish, but it's like heavily aged over. Now I'm sure in person this will look way different because it's actually a gold finish, so it'll probably have a metallic nature to it, but that's just what this reminds me of, a heavily aged over Antigua finish. But then you get to the headstock and it's not aged. That would have been cool if they would have sprayed that over with a yellowed lacquer. But what I was let down about this one is they didn't do the back. They just left it the original color. Now granted, that's a fantastic looking grained back. The maple's very cool on that. And pairing that with this, it was pretty tempting because I think that's one of the first custom finished USA Epiphones I've seen in the shop. There might have been one or two other ones, but $3,299. That's a $600 premium over the other colors, Vintage Sunburst and Royal Tan. That one had to have started life as a royal tan, unless they swapped out the pickup covers, because that's the only one that has the chrome. The other one had the black plastics. So maybe we'll see some more custom colors of these show up. But strangely enough, that's why this looks so weird. They took the pick guard off of it and they filled it in, so it's like it never even left the factory with it. That's why that one looks so oddly vintage as compared to the newer ones. Now let's jump over to the listings that sold relatively quickly. There were some really cool ones in here too. Here's the highlights. The Flying V Custom finally got listed. Remember how I was telling you guys, I think three episodes ago, they had the Firebird Custom in here, the SG Custom, and the Explorer Custom. You could get the complete set of custom guitars that they did a few years ago from the demo shop. Now these guys, they're still hanging around. But that silly old Flying V when it finally reared its head three weeks late. It sold right away, and at a slight premium as compared to everything else. But to be fair, the Flying V Custom is a pretty cool model. I think we're due to see a Silver Burst version of one of these as a signature guitar for someone soon. So I'm sure we'll review it then. Speaking of Silver Burst, this is the best deal on a Silver Burst Les Paul Custom we've seen yet. $36.99, that just seems really good. However, back in 2012, I think I paid like $4,200 for a brand new one. This one's like a combination of what we've seen the past couple of weeks. That one that had way too much of a burst, the one last week that was really good. This one, they're getting a little bit crazy back here, but not as bad as that one. Next up, this Les Paul Standard T. I don't like this finish, but that top is just absolutely explosive. If it looks like this in Gibson stock photos, you can bet your butt that thing is crazy in person. Like, it looks like they even swapped out our knobs to, like, really, really exaggeratedly amper it over. So it just makes this whole guitar look like it is on fire. So even though I'm not a big fan of the fire burst finish, it looks good here. It's just a shame the back is kind of boring. Next up, they actually listed a custom shop prototype this week. Kind of surprised we didn't see this on Gibson.com. But let's take a look at this. Advertised as a custom shop prototype, I kind of expected, you know, it's going to be from the custom shop, right? Let's see if there's any truth behind that. So this is an SG custom, but instead of having three humbuckers, gold hardware, they blacked it out and they gave it P90s, which is a really cool late 60s vibe here. You get the Lyre Vibrola for your tailpiece, which I'm not a big fan of. But then this, ebony fretboard with your mother of pearl inlays that are custom blocks. The big old Gibson custom headstock there. That's a really cool looking guitar. However, when you look on the back, this looks more like a Gibson USA guitar. And especially when you look at the front, that also looks like a Gibson USA in my opinion. And this headstock, where's our custom shop ink stamp serial number? 
It's not really quite clear to me in this photo. Is it actually stamped like a USA serial number? I can't see it here, but it doesn't have the custom shop decals that you normally find. I mean, it's constructed the custom shop way back here with the extended heel from the body that juts up to the heel of the neck. It's got some chips, nicks, and dings. That's kind of an interesting flat area on the horn right there. But where I really got lost is Gibson USA case. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they just put the wrong photo in here or they meant to put Gibson USA prototype. That would be really cool. I could see it selling for like 3000 to 3500 even though it's just a USA because it's so cool. Maybe make it a limited edition or maybe it was an abandoned artist signature model. Like, is it custom shop, but they just didn't put the regular stuff on here. They listed it at 4699 It sold even before I saw it in the shop. Prototypes tend to do that. I don't even see the prototype stamp on this. I gotta check out the listing description on this. Okay, so down here, they tell us that it was stamped prototype, so it's just really hard to see. But under the serial number description, it says NSN. I would assume that means no serial number, and that's their internal code maybe. RAM 013000. That RAM code, you see that on all of the boxes when you buy something from this shop, so that's definitely what that is. Okay, kind of an interesting guitar. Definitely save this listing though, whoever bought that, just so you can, you know, cover your tracks later on if you decide to sell it. This thing right here threw me for a loop. I thought that was a custom color on just a regular Les Paul standard. But then I kept flipping through these photos and I was like, whoa, 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 <laughs> what? This is a Les Paul Modern. That looks so transformed. Because it originally looked like this. You got the clear knobs, the black plastics, the chrome plating everywhere. But then this one, they transformed it into cream plastics, which got rid of all the modernness to it, made it look more traditional. Through a left-handed Bigsby. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that. That's funny. And then that uncovered zebra bobbin, this just became a totally different looking guitar with a sweet finish. So big props to whoever did that one up. You completely transformed that just by changing a few parts. Next up, this Les Paul Standard. I liked the top on it. It was super ultra wavy, almost looks like a five piece top because there's some interesting mineral streaking in the pieces that makes it look multi-pieced. But then you get this really big wide area right here, not perfectly book matched. It's a beautiful guitar, a bit of an ugly duckling by traditionalist standards, but I absolutely loved that one. But then you find out, oh, it's 2015 spec. You're either gonna love that or you're not. But this is also when you notice this is a different finish than just regular old cherry sunburst. The back actually has a metallic coat to it. You can still see through it, but it's going to be very shiny. I didn't even know that existed. So that's something a little bit more special on your cherry sunburst that you might not have ever knew was an option. They called that one Heritage Cherry Sunburst Candy. So that is it for the demo shop. Now you need to move over to Gibson's mod collection. But as of what is available as of recording this episode, yeah. You know, 68 Les Paul reissue for a decent price. I think we talked about that one last time. Same with the SG Special. There's a 64 335 reissue. Surprisingly enough, that Firebird Custom is still available. I mean, heck, that was my thumbnail last time and nobody wanted it after that. Pretty much, I think the only thing that's new is this guy right here. And there's not much to talk about. It's just a Karina style flying V with a mahogany body. They threw one of the Bigsby's on it. I always love a flying V with a B7 style Bigsby because they have to use those legs down there. <laughs> I just think it looks kind of cool, but certainly more affordable than the $10,000 Karina production model flying V's at $4,199. The first one was this SG standard base for $2,299 bucks. Pretty cool because they triple buckered this thing. You've got two mud buckers and like the ones that you find on like a Thunderbird. So that was pretty cool. But the finish that they gave it was metallic. It was kind of like an olive oil spill color. You can see some purple and blue right here, but mainly like the gunmetal gray type look. But what made this one extra cool to me is the fact that they threw an HP truss rod cover on it. I don't think it was actually an HP model. I could be wrong on that, but look at our headstock. Zoom in there, you can actually see they sparkled over the headstock. That is a fantastic touch. That made that a must buy for someone and a must talk about for me. 
But then they did up another Firebird custom. This one actually sold. Kind of a similar vibe to that last one. It appears it might have had a flip-flop finish. It's either that or they just painted the headstock a different color. Because here you can see it's more of like a, a greenish gold color, whereas the back is more of a gunmetal. But you can see at certain angles, the light kind of reflects a similar color as that, and Gibson headstocks angle back. So will this turn a bright color in person? I'm not sure. But I'm so happy to see these Firebird customs getting new paint job ideas, because we haven't had anything besides black outside of the Mate to Measure program in a while. I was tempted to buy this, I think it lasted like a day or two, if it would have had the banjo style tuners on it. Yeah, that would have been a, a no questions asked, I would have bought that to review. Because I haven't done hardly any Firebirds. Next up they had a beautiful sparkle blue ES335. Not much more to say about this one except for it had a fantastic finish on it. They gave it that pretty cool reflective gold pick guard. That looks cool in photos, but it would get all fingerprinted up. Probably not my favorite, but that looks pretty sweet. And the last one for this week was one of the 70s Flying Vs from the Gibson USA production. They swapped out our pick guards with black ones. They gave it different pickups. Looks like a P94 in the neck and some other type of humbucker in the bridge. It was just a good deal at $17.99. Those things are hard to find in stock. They're 2000 bucks new at the store. So $200 discount for something uniquely modified by Gibson, not too bad. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed the recap this week. If I happen to have missed something that you thought should have been mentioned, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.